so as I said, a uh, very warm welcome. I'm Sonia Kerr and I am delighted to have been appointed head teacher of Glasgow Virtual School. And both my colleagues, Shona Graham and I, are delighted to be invited along tonight um, to tell you a bit more about Glasgow Virtual School. And, and also, um, due to the um, environment we're in just now with COVID, there, sometimes Glasgow Virtual School can be a wee bit of a misnomer. So we'll hopefully then we can reassure you about the services that Glasgow Virtual School can offer to your young person um, and to yourself and your family. We introduction first, as I said, I'm Sonia Kerr and I'm the head teacher. I was deputy at Govan High School for a number of years, and, and I'm delighted to say that I that I I really enjoyed that time there. I felt privileged to be working with the young people in Glasgow and doing everything that we could to support our young people. And I'm really delighted now to have a team of, of people in Glasgow Virtual School that are also trying to do that for the young people in Glasgow City wild, wide. I'll hand over to Shona to give a quick introduction just now and a wee bit of background about Shona. Hey, hello everybody. My name's Shona Graham. I'm the lead for Care Experience Learners as part of Glasgow Virtual School. I've worked in Glasgow education for over 15 years now, both as an educational psychologist, I was seconded for the last three years into the, the Care Experience team. And prior to that, I was a primary school teacher um, also in, in Glasgow. Um, like Sonia, I'm absolutely delighted to be here tonight to talk to you about the Care Experience Learner part of Glasgow Virtual School. And it's something I'm very, very passionate about and very privileged to be part of. Now, first of all, I am going to tell you a wee bit about what a Glasgow virtual school is and why it will become a virtual school. I was seconded to the Care Experience team, as Shona um, mentioned there in October 2020 and I was delighted to be part of that team. It was a very small team with Shona as, as EP, myself as deputy head and half a social worker on the team. And you can imagine trying to um, support the young people in Glasgow and um, that was no mean feat um, in terms of a care experience population. So as part of my secondment, I did write a report and it was on virtual schools. Now, the, the virtual schools are not a new thing. In fact, down south, there's a virtual school in every local authority and they are there to support all of the young people within that authority. Now in Scotland, we are, I think, the sixth um, virtual school. And Glasgow, though, have we do have a virtual school looking after our care experienced learners, but we have got a wee bit of a different structure. And that's what I'd really like to explain this evening. So the change has been driven by a range of factors. The care experienced virtual school report that I wrote as part of the secondment. Learning from the best practice in the care review, um, which lots of you will know about the promise. And the impact, of course, of improved virtual support and, of course, the digital competence of teachers during the pandemic. And I should say there, the, the, the competence of teachers during the pandemic and the sharp, the sharp learning curve as well of our young people in terms of digital competence as well, in terms of um, working on IT and learning through IT. So what is a virtual school? As I mentioned earlier on, we support and work with care experienced children as if they were in a single school. They are, of course, still enrolled in their own school. They do, and that's a really important point. They do remain enrolled in, in their own school, um, but we are looking at them as if they were in a single school. So we're tracking and monitoring them and supporting them as if they were in that single school. Um, this includes all Glasgow children um, in the authority and out, those staying out with the authority too. Delighted that we've got dedicated staff in the three areas of the city, and I'll tell you a wee bit more about the structure of it in a minute, in a couple of slides um, away. And we're looking after the following groups of care experienced children and young people. So early years, primary, secondary, unaccompanied asylum seeking children, and our out of local authority children within the different local authorities. So what's our structure? What does it look like? Our services that we do offer. As I've mentioned, the traditional, the virtual school 
that most people will know about are working with our care experienced learners. And absolutely, we are doing that and delighted that Shona Graham is our lead on that. We also, um, the, the other services we provide are the hospital education service. So if a young person is admitted to hospital, then again, the, um, we can educate them when they're in hospital and really importantly in that transition back to school. And also the interrupted learner service. And this is a service that where a young person can access education due to usually health reasons or other exceptional circumstances. And again, that is another part of our service. So these three main areas. And we also have professional digital learning on the remit as well. And just emphasising there again, pupils do stay um, enrolled in their own school and we provide the services um, above. And we really work closely, really important, we work so closely with our schools to provide the support and to sign posts to support as well. So our structure, as I said, there's myself as head teacher. We have our lead for interrupted learner service and hospital education service, Anne Gillespie. And we have Shona, who's here this evening, our lead for care experienced learners and those in the edge of care. And then our three area lead officers that I mentioned, um, and they are working closely with schools in each area. So they're really building that relationship with, with the schools. And of course, importantly, trying to get to know um, the, the, the young people, the cohorts of young people in the areas. So we've got our Northeast Area Lead Officer and they've got a strategic role for ILS and Hospital Education Service. We've got our South, um, our South Area Lead Officer, who's also got a strategic role for professional digital learning and our Northwest Area Lead Officer, who also has a strategic role of care experience and edge of care. So a wee bit more about the interrupted learner service. As I said, this is really for young people whose education has been impacted, usually through health reasons or other exceptional circumstances. So they've maybe been in hospital for a period of time. Um, and as I said, we will support them through the hospital education service and then their transition um, back into school. Or exceptional circumstances for other reasons where the school um, and parent, the young person really feel that they can't access school. Um, usually it's for a shorter period of time and what we can provide in terms of support, in terms of learning um, to help that young person um, transition back into school again. So the learning possibilities for ILS. There's school, so staff within a Glasgow school, and this is an existing model that has been in Glasgow, where there is a member of staff in the Glasgow school and they will support the young person. Now, the barrier can be going into school during that school day. Absolutely, that can be the barrier. So this is where a member of staff that um, the young person usually will feel comfortable with um, and, and feel really, really supportive that young person will maybe teach them after the school day, so when it's a quieter when there's no one else about it doesn't even have to be in school either it could be for instance in a local library it could be in a local community setting as well there's also in um, for exceptional circumstances we have a small pool of staff as well at Glasgow Virtual School and again we are there there maybe isn't a member of staff in the school for, for a number that can happen for a number of reasons and then the school can approach ourselves and we can perhaps provide a member of staff again to provide that learning. And that learning can take place, especially at the moment with COVID, it can take place online, which is more often than not the case at the moment. And then, it, but it can also, um, in instances, take place, of course, face to face, where that is more appropriate for that young person. So how are the young people referred to Glasgow Virtual School? Now, usually this is, is done through, um, through meetings that are held in school, through the joint support team meetings. So and it would be that the young person is referred to that meeting and then either the designated manager. Now, this is for a young person who's care experience. It would normally be a head teacher in a primary school or a deputy head teacher in a secondary school. And they would maybe refer into Glasgow Virtual School. Or it can be the principal teacher of pastoral care who refers in. Can also be social work or children's houses can refer and also educational psychologists. 
if I, w- I would say at this point, if a young person is admitted to hospital, the hospital education service, uh, they are the people who will um, contact the school and will link closely with the school to check the level the young person is at, the subjects that they're taking, and then work to provide that, um, that learning. And that will take place in the hospital while they're in there. So that happens other way. The hospital will contact the school rather than the school referring into Glasgow Virtual School. And I'll just, I just want to finish off um, by referring to the promised education aims and the focus areas in the change programme that, and this is the aim to reach um, these five goals by 2024. So every child who's in care in Scotland having access to intensive support that ensures their education and health needs are fully met. Care experience children and young people receiving all that they need to, that the school knows and cherishes those young people. That school improvement plans will value and respect the needs of the care experience pupils and there's that real robust tracking of attendance and attainment and this is something that our area lead um, officers are working really hard on just now, they've been out in their support visits and they're really working hard to, to, to ensure consistency of approach with the tracking of attendance and attainment with our schools. Care experience young people actively participating in all subjects and their extracurricular activities in schools. And of course, that fifth important focus there in terms of support and ensuring care experience young people go on to genuinely positive destinations um, such as further education, employment, um, higher education, etc., of their choice. And on that note, I'm going to hand over now um, a perfect link for you, Shona, um, to hand over to, to Shona just now um, to talk more about our care experienced learners, and then we'll take any questions at the end. Thanks, Shona. That's great, Sonia. Thank you. So we're going to spend the last part of the presentation just looking in a wee bit more detail about what support we offer our care experienced learners through the Glasgow Virtual School. So the main focus is really improving the educational outcomes of our care experience learners. And we've got four target areas, and that's to improve their attendance at school, their attainment, that's the qualifications they leave school with, the positive destinations, what they go on to do after school and making sure that's a sustained positive destination and reducing exclusions. And although the, the gap is lowering, there, are, there is still some work to do there in terms of our, our care experience learners. Thank you. So who is care experienced? There's a number of different categories and, and some of this you will be familiar with. So care experience can be a young person or child who's looked after at home on a compulsory supervision order and that will have been a decision of a children's hearing. They could be looked after away from home in a kinship care placement and that kinship placement could be formal through social work or it could be an informal arrangement between families, but we would still deem those young people as care experienced. There could be a foster care placement, and that could be in or out of Glasgow, or they could be in a residential children's house. And within Glasgow, we have 19 children's houses across the three areas of the city. You can also be care experienced if you've been adopted, because it means at some point you have been through the care system and you have been looked after. And you can also be care experienced if you've been previously looked after as well. And we use the Scottish Government's definition. So something that we often ask our schools is about the corporate parenting responsibility that we share. So within education, we would be asking our schools, well, how do we ensure that the learning and well-being needs of care experienced children and young people are being appropriately met? And we would support our schools to look at that. Really importantly, asking our schools, well, how many learners are recorded as being care experienced? And that's so that we don't miss anybody in terms of the support that we can offer. And in what ways can action be taken to improve the ways in which schools exercise their responsibility in relation to this as well? Thank you, Sonia. And we're very much supported by the legis legislation. So all children who are looked after by a local authority are assumed to have additional support needs. And that is unless it's evident they're progressing well without the requirement for this. 
and this is written into the Additional Support for Learning Act. And children who are looked after should have the same educational opportunities as all other children for education, and that includes further and higher education and access to other opportunities for development, and that's within the, the Children's Scotland Act. So I'm just going to tell you a wee bit about some of the supports that we offer across the city to all our educational establishments for our care experienced learners. So as a team, we offer weekly multi-agency um, referral consultations, and that would be with our education and social work colleagues. And those consultations are very much strengths based and solution focused for that young person. We also offer care experience training for our schools and we've got a training event looking at core training coming up in March. We host designated manager network events for schools and that includes our nurseries, our primaries and our secondaries across the city. Following a consultation, we might offer to attend an education or a multi-agency meeting when required on behalf of Glasgow Virtual School. And we might also signpost our referrers, just go back a slide, Sonia, okay. um, towards other supports that are available to support our care experienced learners. So that might include some targeted intervention, perhaps through tutoring or outdoor learning, and we also have a general support list that we send round to our schools as well, with a variety of different supports. And this year we're rolling out a programme looking at how nurturing is our children's house. And this comes from, from the school's work on how nurturing is our, our school. We ran a pilot in one of our children's houses last year, and we're now going to roll it out across the, the remaining 18 houses this year. Thank you. So just go into a little more detail about some of the supports. So very much thinking about the health and well-being of our, of our young people and their learning. We have a really strong focus on qualifications and attainment. And we can offer some tutor support, as Sonia spoken about, through the virtual school. Ideally coming from the school first, a teacher who is available and has a relationship with the young person. And we would see that as an earlier intervention. We have a really good link with the volunteer tutor organisation and we currently have approximately 70 care experienced learners across primary and secondary being supported by a volunteer tutor, which has been done virtually at the moment. We can recommend some other therapies to schools for those young people who can't access those therapies through a counselling tender. So, for example, we might have um, some young people in primary, perhaps primary one or two, who are looking for some, some play therapy. Or in secondary, we might have young people who would really benefit from some art or drama or music therapy. We also have a link with our social work colleagues in the Outdoor Resource Centre. And we can offer support there on a one-to-one -one basis for young people to do an outdoor activity to help support that mainstream placement. And this year we've linked in with our Blair Varick colleagues as well, looking at a similar support for our primary learners as well. And although I said it was individual, we're looking at expanding that out so that we can support some small groups of care experienced learners in both primary and secondary. So in terms of the other support, we have a really strong link with our children's houses. As I said, we've got 19 across the city with approximately 140 care experienced learners. And the young people living in our children's houses range from as young as primary one all the way up to, to young adults in their, in their 20s. We have three area leads as part of Glasgow Virtual School and they have regular contact not only with the schools in their area, but with the children's houses. We track and monitor those children really carefully in terms of their attendance, their attainment, the positive destinations. And we cross check that with information that we can access through our schools as well. And that makes sure that nobody slips through uh, the net. And as I've already mentioned, we're rolling out our programme looking at how nurturing is our children's house. So area leads have been really busy since um, the return in August this academic year. We've got three, one for each area of the city, and they've been out visiting all of the secondaries, um, all of our ASL establishments, and now they're conducting some primary visits um, virtually. And there's a real focus on attendance of our care experienced learners, particularly any young people whose attendance is below 80%. 
We're reaching out to those schools to hear what the story behind that might be and to look to see if we can offer any other support or guidance around that to improve that attendance. And we're also focusing on exclusions to reduce those further. We offer continuous support and advice through our consultation and we offer a training on our self-evaluation toolkit. And we're aiming to have every school along for that training in March this year. And the visits that our area lead officers um, conduct with our schools, that will inform future training needs across our schools. Thank you. So we're just going to spend a, a few minutes showing you one of our favourite clips that we often use in our training. And it really highlights just the difference that one good adult can make to, to a young person. And I'll let you just read over the, the quotes as Sonia brings up the video clip. Up. Ian's still the highest scoring striker ever to play for Arsenal, and he owes a lot to the man who first taught him to kick a ball, his old school teacher, Sid Pigden. As I haven't seen him for, what, 23, 24 years, and so he would now be expecting me to be six feet under, I would think. I, I don't actually think, uh, he, he probably won't recognise me because he won't believe it's me. <laughs> Hello, Ian. Long time no see. Mr. Pigman. <laughs> You're alive. I'm alive, he says. How are you doing? I can't believe it. Someone said you was dead. As you see, I'm very much in, and I'm so glad you've done so well with yourself. He was so um, supportive all the time. He, he, he kind of like had me as, as his kind of like special guy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. God. God, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You know, now I realize how important he was in my life. The first main imposing figure, male figure in my life who was trying to guide me on the, the right road. How far think? are we going back now? 40 years? 30, yeah. 30 easy, years anyway? Easy. 30, 30 odd, 32 years. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, Sonia. Thank you. As I say, it's one of our favourite clips. It really yeah. highlights the impact, the positive impact that, that, that an adult can have on a, a young person's um, life. So we're going to move back to the, the presentation. And the next slide really highlights the journey that Glasgow has been on and continues to be on in terms of developing nurture and Glasgow very much being a nurturing city. So nurturing principles, principles are embedded throughout our, our schools. And as I said previously, we're now looking at that model within our children's houses. And just to highlight what those six principles are, because they're absolutely fundamental and universal to support all learners within our schools. And that's that children's learning is understood developmentally, not necessarily about their chronical, chronological age, but perhaps where they are socially and emotionally. That the school or the, the home environment really offers a safe base from which children can learn from and feel safe. The importance of nurture for the development of well-being is understood. And that the language that we use is a vital means of communication. And in fact, all behaviour is communication. In terms of often children with distress or challenged behaviour are trying to tell us something, they're trying to tell us how they're feeling, what the emotion is behind, and it's having that understanding of what they're trying to communicate. And very much about the importance of transitions in children's and young people's lives. Thank you, Sonia. So I'm going to finish up the presentation just to touch on the promise um, which really does lead a lot of the work that we have developed as, as part of the Care Experience Learner, Learner team. So there's five fundamental foundations from the promise, and that's voice, family, care, people and scaffolding. And just to give you some examples around that, in terms of voice, 
what the promise says is that children must be listened to and appropriately involved in decisions made about their care. And we need to listen to them and respond to what they want and what they need. In terms of care, the promise tells us that if children and young people are unable to live with their families, then they must stay with their brothers and sisters where it's safe to do so. And they must be part of a loving family. For people, we need workers who have the focus on the importance of relationships for our care experienced children and young people. And they should be supported to develop long lasting and important relationships. And we have to develop a compassionate workforce in that decision making process. For family, where children are safe in their families and feel loved, they must stay. And families must be given support together to nurture that love and overcome some of those difficulties and challenges that can get in the way. And finally, scaffolding. Children, families and the workforce must be supported by a system that is there when it is needed and the scaffolding of help, support and accountability. Thank you very much for, for listening the ev this evening. I think that's our, our final slide. And Sonia and I would be delighted to take any questions that you've got this evening. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, okay. Catherine's got you some questions, so we'll just... There's some questions here, yeah. Some of the questions went on quite early, so it may be that, you you know, they've been answered, but I'll just take the, the questions in the, the order that they came. So the first question is from Jane Wright, and the question is, how would my foster son access support from the virtual school as he is struggling to access the curriculum at his own school? Now, I know that you've touched on, you know, accessing through you know, the, the school in which the young person is enrolled. But I'll let you come in and, you know, pick up anything there that you would want to reinforce for Jane. Absolutely, if I maybe come in here. So although schools can refer in um, to the care experience learner part of Glasgow Virtual School, social workers can as well. So Jane, if, if there's a social worker still linked with you, they could fill in a referral, we could have a consultation. We would always in invite the school along if they're able to as well, so that it is collaborative. So that would be one way that, that you would be able to access to look at further supports and to have that kind of strength-based um, conversation. I think if I can add to that, thanks, Joan, as well. I think what's really important as a parent and carer is that you'll be invited along too. You Absolutely. Know, you can go, so the young person and yourself can also be invited to that consultation um, as well, which is which can be vital. And those okay. are our best consultations, the ones where we do get parents and young people along. It, along. it really does come alive then. Absolutely. That should be, that should be the focus. Okay, thank you for that. I'll move on to the next question, which is from Rabina Khan. Is a young person who is in or has been in a mental health adolescent unit, would they also come under care experienced? Sonia, I'm not sure if you want to come in here. Unless they've got a social worker, there would only be care experiences that have ever been looked after. So if they've been looked after at home on a compulsory supervision order, or if they're looked after away from home, and that would depend on that care placement and that tends to be if it's a kinship or, or foster or, or children's house so it's not necessarily the hospital setting okay anything else you want to add to that or is that that one we can move on to the third and final question that's there at the moment and that's from karen um and this is about interrupted learners at secondary school um, with several months absent due to anxiety and um, I'm not sure, a, a tick disorder. Would this come under exceptional and would the virtual school be something that our school could reach out to try to get them back into the school system? Yes, absolutely. That could be. Now, what happens is it would go through, as I mentioned earlier, the joint support team uh, meeting. And then that's where there are several agencies around that table um, that would discuss if this would be a good route. And then they would be referred into Glasgow Virtual School. And absolutely. And that learning could take place. It could take place remotely. And as I said, it can also take place in school, after school hours or in a, in a local community setting. OK, oh, wait a minute, there's one more coming in. I'm um, just moving on to the open questions. Um, Jane has come back to say, would it be possible to share information about the virtual school with Glasgow City Council foster carers 
as I don't think most of us are aware of this service. Now, Leanne will probably come in and say that this recording um, will be on the Glasgow City Parents Group um, YouTube channel, but I'm sure that Sonia um, and Shona might want to pick something up there as something you know that they could do for foster carers in the city. So, Lily, in the past, we've, we've come out to speak about the Care Experience team. Now, that was that was before any lockdown, so that was well over um, two years ago. And we've got really strong links with it, with our social work colleagues. In fact, as, as Sonia mentioned at the start of the session, we have a, a social work service manager as part of our team. So what we'll do is we can speak to them to make sure that information that will be getting disseminated around all our social work teams, we're going to be doing some more presentations, but we'll make sure that information gets sent to, to the group for, for the foster carers about the virtual school. We do have a, a Twitter site as well. It's got some information and we've got um, information on Glasgow online, but we'll make that direct link for, for Jane. Yeah, and just to confirm, Jane, that tonight is being recorded. Um, so it will be sent out to um, those who have signed up for tonight as well. And it, the recording will be shared with Sonia and Shona so that then again, they can share this recording wider as well. So it'll be on our YouTube channel where anyone can access. So even if you feel that you know any other foster carers or um, anyone that you think doesn't know about it, then feel free to share the video link far and wide. Okay, oh, there's a question, another one's just come in. Um, and that's from Loveth um, Elisa. Is care experience programme for the only for the older children? Can a parent who's struggling with childcare of a 15 month old baby benefit from it? Now I know that you touched on um, early years at the start. So that's an interesting one from a, you know, the other end of the education system. It is now we do cover zero to 24 and obviously we, if, I, if there's a wee one in nursery the nursery or social worker could still refer in for a consultation in fact even if they're not in nursery um, as well so I suppose the only thing that might limit us is what's available we've got probably more for our, our primary and secondary because we tend to get less kind of referrals in for our early years but it's not to exclude anybody we're open to any conversation um, any consultation we could offer so again if it could go through either the school or social worker, then then we could we could link in there, and even if it's just advice and signposting further on. I was just going to say that, Shona. That's exactly what it could be—just support and guidance, even for later on. Absolutely, absolutely. 